Taco Palenque fans, we have something special for you. Try the Casero Taco now for only $2.75 Monday through Thursday. Flavor packed with premium sirloin rice and refried beans. Only at Taco Palenque. At participating locations for limited time, not valid for delivery. Other restrictions may apply. From a highly secure network of top secret locations across North America, this is the Spurs Insider, brought to you as always by Taco Palenque. I'm your host, Mike Finger, joined by Express News Spurs beat writers Tom Orsborne and Jeff McDonald and sports editor Nick Talbot. This week, Greg Popovich talked about the importance of timing, how you can have a plan, but if, if the timing isn't right, it just doesn't work. And there were all kinds of ways that the Spurs Insider podcast this week heading into the All-Star break, hitting the midway point of the rodeo road trip. I mean, if, if our timing wasn't right, we'd be talking about doom and gloom this morning. We're, we're, we're recording on a beautiful morning in North America. But instead of recording this after the trip to Dallas or after the trip to Brooklyn, we're doing it the morning after. Just a breakthrough, wonderful night for your local cagers in Toronto. The Spurs got a big night from Victor Wembanyama, triple double with the uh, with the block as part of the triple double. His his supporting cast played well. The vibes are good, and one of the happiest people, one of the just most uh, positive colleagues I've ever had in my life. Tom Orsborn is reveling in this this morning. Tom, what are your impressions of the team? after a, a rare win on the rodeo road trip. My goodness, that was an excellent introduction. Thanks, Tom. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, the, what stood out to me, okay, Victor overshadows everything, and that's going to be the way it is for a long time. But as you mentioned, the supporting cast, that's that's what stood out to me. Jeremy and Devin were excellent, and you, you coupled them together with Victor – and he got a glimpse of what what it all could be. And uh, my gosh, if you're a Spurs fan and you don't wake up energized and excited about the future today, I don't I don't know what it's going to take. Like if we would do this after the Jeff McDonald games, Jeff Jeff typically on his road games brings a lot of doom and gloom. Like if we were to take this after Florida, we'd be talking about how miserable this season season is and continues to be because this road trip didn't start great, and we we'd set the over under. For the nine-game road trip last week on the podcast, I believe at one and a half, and what we all said, Jeff included, that the one that they they might get is Toronto. That's the one they got, and it's just funny how the the season ebbs and flows depending on the latest results. Uh, but Jeff, you were watching from your secure location back uh, much farther south than Tom and I last night, and that was a different team than you saw in in Florida, right? Yeah, yeah I was watching from Venezuela, uh -huh. much farther south than you. Uh, what I saw last night was a was a was a team blowing a blowing a lottery pick, blowing a chance at a lottery pick. That's what I saw. <laughs> Again, always the as bottom. as advertised, the doom and gloom is brought by Jeff McDonald. Yeah, it did put Toronto. To, I think they're pretty much in a tie with Memphis for the uh, sixth worst record or sixth best lottery odds, whichever way you want to phrase that. But so, yeah, yeah, tough night and tough night for the local cagers. And to remind the listeners, if uh, if Toronto and it, it, the record doesn't decide everything, we have to go through the lottery uh, to find out whether the team moves up or down. But if Toronto ends up with the sixth pick, or the fifth pick, or the fourth pick, or higher, they they keep that pick. If they're seventh or lower, it goes to your local cagers, who would have two lottery picks this year. And so yeah, Jeff just threw the wet blanket on this. Yeah, but, uh, I, I should I should clarify that I'm just goofing. I'm just goofing. Like I don't think the Spurs really should have lost that game. I think in a miserable season like this, you just got to take the wins wherever they come and be happy. Be happy for a night if you're the Spurs. So yeah, good good for them. I mean, they won that one wire to wire. It was pretty dominant performance. All the things you guys mentioned. It was more than just Victor, although it was a lot of Victor. Um, and it was it was. Uh, I mean, it was, it was, we say this, like we might've gotten numb to with the, the exploits of Mr. Wimbanyama so far this, this year, but it was a joy to watch. It was fun to watch. It was just amazing to watch, thrilling to watch you, and the blocks mostly like he's just saw blocked shots that you've never seen before, which is an amazing thing to do. 
So it was a good night for your local cagers. They got the one win on the rodeo trip. We, we, we can talk later to see if they can make it two once it resumes. I mean, I, or maybe win in Dallas. I don't know. And you go back to you go back to that Detroit game when he had his first triple double. We saw passes we've never seen from a, a seven foot three guy. So to do you know to do triple doubles with the assists and then the blocks. I mean, my gosh, it's uh, it's really something. I mean, the versatility of that guy is really amazing. And for this to come on the heels of a stretch of games, really dating back to probably the beginning of February where it looked like the season um the 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 longest schedule he's ever played in his in his life uh in terms of so many games in so few days it, it was catching up with him and s- sitting in Brooklyn not too long just a few days ago it, it, you know you just kind of looked and thought man this this kid is tired <laughs> this kid mm-hmm. this kid has hit sort of a wall and he was still effective his his stats were still mm-hmm. i mean rookie of the year type but uh, it just looked like, oh, man, this is catching up to him. And it's not like he got a huge rest before this Toronto game. I think that was the, what, the fourth game in six nights, yeah. something like that. Uh, he it just, was a he, lot. He, he said he, lot. Last, last night he said he came out and just kind of felt rejuvenated. And I guess that happens during this Yeah, season. sometimes it's hard to explain. Like there was a lot going on with him or, or with the schedule even leading into the rodeo trip, they had played seven games in 11 nights before the trip even started. And I remember that last game at home going into the locker room to talk to Victor or the one of the last games. And he was, you know, sniffling and sneezing and, and like Tom I, I can relate. I can relate. <laughs> Maybe he gave it to you, but he was all allergenic. It was all seasonal allergies. It's almost like going on the road has, has helped him with it, but it was seven games in 11 nights. And so he did look dog tired. Then they had three days off. And he said, well, that kind of messed with me, too, because we had three days off and then a back to back. Like, it it seems to me like his body is such a finely tuned machine that any sort of um, change in the routine or the schedule uh, messes with him a little bit is is kind of what he was telling us. And he just has to adjust. And I don't know what happened between Brooklyn and Toronto. Like, there's really no there's no real explanation why all of a sudden he's rejuvenated when when he wasn't just two nights earlier but you could clearly see it like from the very i mean blocked the first shot of the game gets a dunk the other end um making threes making drives like just his he looked more than just the results he just had more bounce he looked more energetic from the from the get-go in toronto and i I don't know i can't who can who can explain the human body what are we physiologists on this show no we're epidemiologists or something like that. Um, we're all we're all amateur that. Yeah. Uh, political scientists, observers of the human condition. You get all that on the Spurs Insider. Internationally popular Spurs Insider. Tom Orsborn and I traveling the country, traveling traveling North America. Just the the number of fans that we see that 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 shout out our names. Love the podcast. <laughs> Listening to you from uh, Israel, right, Tom? Yes, yes. We heard we heard that. Shout out to yeah. Isaac. Um Jeff mentioned about getting numb to Victor Wembanyama. And uh when like the, I think the the viewers slash listeners of this podcast are part of this. Those of us who cover him are part of this. You see him so often that you forget how incredible it is. And one of the one of the comments to Tom last night where he, he Victor's going through doing his Victor stuff. And uh, one of the many, many reporters who show up for Victor Women Yama game said to Tom something like, wow, you guys are going to be enjoying yourselves. Lo- what was it? Loving, loving, loving this for 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, Tom, I'm not sure. Uh, I I, him, what was your reaction that Tom to hear well, that you're going to be doing this for 20 years? I told him I just turned 60. Uh, you know, that's not in my future. <laughs> 20 years. You know, Pop can do it. Pop can go yeah, still. Yeah, Pop will probably do it. Yeah, and do his nineties. Uh, yeah, that's going to yeah. be a heck of a Pop pregame in twenty years when it's Pop and Tom Orsborn and Mike Monroe. Man, <laughs> boy, yeah, uh, but yeah, Victor. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, just to circle back to what what I my first comments on the podcast. I mean, what what a future. I mean. Uh, yeah, and and people are clamoring uh, for them to add 
add veterans. Um, you know, Mike covered that in his column uh, Sunday, I believe, Monday, Monday. And uh, it, it'll come eventually. But, I mean, just just enjoy looking at those three guys right now, Victor especially. But, you know, Jeremy shut down Scotty Barnes last night. It was a, it was a hell of a performance. Um, held up the shooting, three of 15 shooting. And then Devin is, you know, look at his stats over the last 15 games or so. He's been pretty incredibly consistent. I think people want these guys to grow up too fast sometimes. Fans, fans do. Like, why can't Devin just be consistent like this all the time? Because he's 23. Because it's, this is not his prime. Because this is really his first year of having this sort of responsibility. Yes, he's in his fourth year, but he started off on a team with DeMar DeRozan and and Devin I mean, uh, and uh, Rudy Gay and those guys as a rookie. Um, he was injured for parts of his second and third year, and this is his first year of having this sort of usage. So of course there's going to be ups and downs, and the same with Jeremy Sohan. You know, we already we've talked ad nauseum about him starting the year off, uh, you know, out of position. But even back at his normal position, this is his, this he's early in his crease, twenty years old. He's barely he's barely um, older than Victor Wimbanyama. So the people want people want they seem to want to fast forward all this, both in adding adding veterans and adding this guy and adding that guy, and also they just want these guys to be great now like why can't they be great now and it's because they're they're very young in their careers and so I, yeah it, it's it's gonna I, but it also i also get the flip side where it's just frustrating to watch a team win 11 games like we go on and on and fawn about victor and how life-changing he is but they've won 11 games and i get how that's frustrating too but the thing just takes time well that that, that goes back to the timing of the podcast taping because, <laughs> I mean, the if we take this two days earlier or maybe a day later, um, we're we're talking about just how, again, how miserable all this is. And you like you you see the upside of going with the youth and Devin and Jeremy and Victor after a game against Toronto, which by the way just sold off their best guys and yeah, they're not good. one of the worst teams in the league now. Yeah. So your perspective is going to be different after you play a team like Toronto than it would be if you play basically 20 other teams in the league. Um, and, and I'm not dismissing, and I don't think any of us are the idea that more veterans would help. And by the way, another person who's not dismissing that is Greg Popovich. Right. Um, speaking on behalf of the organization, like, the the column that Tom so nicely um, promoted earlier about this subject um, that was on expressnews.com and in your Express News Dead Tree edition earlier this week um, was about how like this team needs vets. It's the youngest team in the league. It got younger after shredding Doug McDermott. By the way, that happened after our last podcast, right? So we could we could probably get into that later. Um, Oh, it was a blockbuster. It was a blockbuster. We could, do, we could do a whole podcast on the Doug McDermott trade. The Spurs have two 28-year-old guys. Those are the oldest guys on the team. It's Jetty Osman and Devontae Graham, who never plays. Osman's like the eighth guy. Um, they don't have any of the uh, links to the Spurs championship pass. Like the, the, the Not only is like a P- Patty Mills not around, there might only be one or two guys who even – played with Patty Mills for a, a brief period. Um, it's just you don't have that hand-me-down knowledge anymore. You don't have the guys who provide perspective on how to be a pro, like Devontae Graham tries, Chetty Osman tries, but nobody that really uh, can set that example from a uh, you know standpoint of somebody who actually plays a lot. Um, and I, there will come a time... I think probably soon when the youngest team in the league starts adding some older play, older pieces, probably this off season. Like I'm not saying they're going to go get an all star this off season, but I think this this summer is when you start to just add pieces that might be 28, Absolutely. 29, 30, and uh, and you because you don't want to go through. Uh, we asked Pop last night about. You know, it's it's I, he he's he's telling the truth when he says the team maintains a positive upbeat attitude through all this losing. You go to any shoot around the end of any practice and they're screwing around like eight year old kids, like just happy go lucky, 
you would think they were a championship team, how upbeat they are. But there's a balance between like being upbeat through losing and accepting losing habits. And Pop was pointing out like in the in the film sessions, when we get down to work, like it's clear that the mistakes we're making can't be continued to be made. Um, so you don't want to, and, and, and I guess what I'm saying is you, you can't endure another 60 loss season, uh, next year, because then that starts to just make losing normal. And I think that's the, the worry there. So just add a couple of pieces, learn how to improve. They're not going to make the playoffs next year. Uh, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I don't think they'll make the playoffs next year, but you want, you want to start adding this off season. Yeah, if they if they run it back next season, if we have the same roster next season, or the or they still have the youngest team in the NBA, it's a it's a fail. And I don't think that's the plan. I don't I don't I, I would be shocked, and I think we'd all be the first ones to sharpen the pitchforks and help the fans storm the Frost Bank Center. Like this is wrong. This, this is doing it wrong. Well, I think to, it's been, to, I think it's been fine for to this point, but like you said, this is the. It, now that you know what you have, what you need, what it looks like, um, you've you've lost even Doug McDermott as your vet. You have to go get some. You have to. And again, yeah, and not, not well, necessarily I, I stars say- or all stars, but but guys that can help NBA ready players. There aren't a lot of NBA ready players on this roster. Not enough. Yeah. And so they have to go get some this summer. The one caveat I'd say to that is they are so young, and they are so clearly the youngest team in the league that they could add a couple of vets. And Fair enough. Add, you, you see and my then, point. And then add a couple of. Uh, you're, you're also going to add maybe two first round picks. Yeah, it, so, it was. So they I guess still it was. They still could be the youngest team in the I league. I guess it wasn't really had. a mathematical point. It was right. a no. I get it. Point. I get it. Yep. Um, what 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 did you think of the McDermott trade? I'm going to ask Tom first because well, I, it, it was it, it, Tom's probably in the morning. Did he? But, yeah, um, he he he's wearing sackcloth and ashes, and <laughs> we we lost a great guy. <laughs> he didn't die, Tom. He yeah, just I went know. to Indiana. I know. Yeah, and, <laughs> Which, and, I mean, and, some people might say the same thing. And some people, yeah, were saying, well, they didn't get enough for him. But, you know, that's, that's kind of very Spurs-like, too, trying to take a veteran. They even do it with the young players. But take take a guy and put him in a really good spot. You know, do him a solid. They sent him back to Indiana where he played, you know, a good handful of seasons, very familiar with it. He's on a playoff contender that needs uh, shooting. It was a great win for Doug. I know he wanted to stay here, but but still, it's a, it was a, it was a nice move for him. He'll be missed. Yeah, he was a great great guy to deal with. Um, I shot him a text. Uh, I was at Columbia University uh, uh, walking around, and uh, uh, he texted me back. I went into the student student union, I guess, there and banged out a quick story on that. So. I'm just bragging about his work ethic on this podcast. Like, no, well, no, I, what I want to know is, uh, how was the student union? Like, they, they, did they, did they, did they think that like the student body is getting a little, little uh, long in the tooth there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt, I felt, yeah, that was. Did you uh, feel like you, like, yeah, yeah. you but keep anyway. getting older, but they keep staying the same age, that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, I can. But, I'll always remember where I was almost when Doug McDermott was traded. I was uh, staring at a vacant lot in Orlando, Florida, because my cab driver got lost oh, on the man. way from the uh, the airport. So that yeah. was that was a fun day. A cab driver mentioned... in an age of Ubers. Right? Yeah, we're not going to get into that on this yeah. podcast. Yeah, we all do what it takes. <laughs> we learn. We, we, we learn. We learn our lessons. That's another it's, example of. Great I thought I was example. saving time, but I was not saving time. Um, Tom mentioned that uh, you know the the the. The argument that Spurs didn't get enough for Doug McDermott, like I, I thought there was a very decent chance that they wouldn't get anything, and they yeah. end up waving him and buying him out. Just a second but round it, pick yeah. is pretty. So, some really good players got traded for second round picks at this. I shouldn't say really good players. Some significant players that will um, contribute to some playoff races were acquired for second round picks at this deadline, and the Spurs have a bunch of them. And for the most part, second round picks are probably. Um, forgettable, uh, but every now and then you might draft a Mano Ginobili or Nikola Jokic, and I'd I realize that's really, really, really unlikely. 
the more likely thing is you just use one of them in the future of the did to acquire when the Spurs are ready a Doug McDermott equivalent off of some team that is at the bottom of the league in like 2027 and has a has a role player that you want to add to your team. Like it's always good to yeah. collect assets. And um, when you're a team in the Spurs position at the trade deadline, you you don't want to hold on to those guys with expiring contracts that aren't going to be a part of the long term future. Like like this is your shot. Just get whatever you can for them. Right. If it's a second round pick that doesn't amount to anything that you never can use, maybe you just end up selling it down the road, whatever, get mm-hmm. get something for them. Cause like, like they weren't going to re-sign Doug McDermott, I don't think, mm-hmm. and, and bring him back. I don't think that was, that was in the cards. So but you also, and Je- Jeff, you, you brought this up on the last podcast. Did I really? You do, you, you do that. Um, you make, you get something for your, your asset if you had one, but you don't, you don't get rid of. McDermott and Osmond and Devontae Graham all because you need kind of to right. keep a, cu- a couple of grownups around. Right. Also, I'm not so. sure there was much of a market for those other Correct. two guys anyway. Correct. So I don't, I'm sort of surprised there wasn't kind for, of... for Jetty. He like, he, yeah. I think he could help somebody. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, the, the trade deadline went, went about as we thought the first four games, four games of the rodeo road trip went, Pretty much precisely as we thought, three losses and one Toronto victory. Uh, now we're we're recording this before the Dallas game. I think we have a feeling on how that will go. Uh, Tom Orsborn is going to be our representative on All Star Weekend. What are you looking forward to there, Tom, in Indiana? Are you just going to stay at Doug's house? Yeah. Hey, there's a thought. Uh, Victor, uh, Victor in the Rising Stars game and the Skills Challenge. Uh, Jeremy a late injury replacement to the Rising Stars game. Dominic Barlow in the G League Showcase. So, um, you know, unlike some recent uh, past All-Star experiences that were void of Spurs, um, you know, they'll they'll keep me busy this time around. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, Victor last night uh, mentioned, he slipped it in there, the disappointment about not being... You know, on the all-star team, Western Conference roster, um, you know, that still rankles him somewhat. But uh, those things will come. Uh, those things will come aplenty for Victor. Need to check in with the yeah. boss who's been who's been silent so far. Nick, uh, do you have anything to add to our discussion so far? On uh, No, I'm excited for the all-star game. I'd like, I'm glad that Jeremy was, uh, Jeremy was added. I think he was... Uh, he might have been more disappointed than even Victor about not being uh, named to that. So that was good. That was good to see. Uh, excited to see the the Rising Stars Challenge. Victor's going to be actually on an opposite team than Jeremy, though, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Is that correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you know what would have been fun was to uh to to ask Jeremy about how he feels about the rise, being added as a late addition to the Rising Stars and possibly facing Victor Wimbanyama. I guess, I guess Tom Tom can ask him that in Indy. That might be our shot. It's, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait to get into this discussion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, but at some point we might need to have that. <laughs> and we're just, gonna, I'm just gonna leave it at that for the viewers out there, the listeners out there. I'm gonna be intentionally vague, but uh, yeah, I know well, I'm, st- I'm ev- ev- starting. Ev- everybody's, everybody's learning, everybody's growing, everybody's evolving. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, after speaking of, good, speaking of good quotes and, 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 you know, I, I really got a kick out of Victor last night, uh, with some self deprecating humor about he could have had a quintuple double last night with his, uh, seven turnovers. Yeah. I appreciated that comment. I thought it was, I thought it was he's pretty a, cool. He's got a, he's got a nice sense of humor. Yes, he does. Um, the, we, we will, I guess we will record another one of these next week before the the next leg of the rodeo road trip resumes um but do we still i'll I'll throw the one and a half number out there that i i did last week do we still are y'all i think everybody took the under on that and it's still under after the toronto victory but are are the spurs going to win another one before they return to the frost bank center i mean i'm still going to take the under it's 
Uh, when you when you have a 11 win team though it's hard to go game by game and go yep that's the one like you, there's not a toronto out there where it looks like they've got an obvious path to getting a second victory on this trip like dallas is going to be tough um on wednesday and then you then come back and at sacramento back to back at la which the, the lakers which they're playing better at utah i don't know and at minnesota the best team in the west I don't know. It's hard to. I wouldn't bet my house on it. I might bet yours. I haven't. I, I didn't. I haven't watched them, but I saw something uh, this morning about uh, whatever game, whatever games Utah's played since the trade deadline when they sold some people off that they haven't looked uh, very excited. That's <laughs> like, definitely. Was, was that's, there some? That's... Was there some discontent there from from the players who who? Um, are sort of post sell off type of that's thing. So that's maybe so that the one. That's maybe the one you'd you'd give the Spurs a chance in, but I don't know. I think all oh, Will Hardy will have them ready to go. <laughs> would, the, would the Spurs have had some big uh, victories over Utah in in recent they years? Have. I think that was that was the they the, break every streak against them. They they broke a losing streak against them. They had Greg Popovich's record that wasn't really a record, but everyone celebrated as the record. That was against the uh, the Utah Jazz and Quinn Snyder. I believe. Uh, so maybe, maybe, maybe the jazz will help them out again. Um, anything else that has stood out this rodeo road trip so far? Well, what, what was your takeaway from your, your two Florida games there, Jeff? Oh, the, the, the Spurs were not good. And either <laughs> of those games. Yeah. I think they, well, okay. The Miami game, they were, you know what is now that I'm remembering, it seems like a lifetime ago. Now that I get, but um, now that I'm remembering, um, it was really just one quarter in each of those games at Miami and at Orlando. Um, with the with the Heat going into the fourth, I think it was a two point game, and then they end up just getting crushed in the fourth quarter. Orlando, I think it was the second quarter that was a disaster that kind of turned that into a blowout that the Spurs never really got back into, but played them pretty pretty tough the rest of the way. You had that huge twenty three point third quarter from Devin Vassell in Orlando, which sparked a um, a statistic that I would never have guessed, but that was the largest individual scoring tied, uh, scoring quarter for a Spurs player under Greg Popovich. Hmm. Tim Duncan never had a 23-point quarter. Tony Parker never did. Manu Ginobili never did. He had a 22. That was the previous record. LaMarcus Aldridge never did. He also had a 22. But 23 points, and we, we watched history in Orlando, even as the Spurs lost by 147. So that's, this that's whole, what I remember. This whole season, and those those games were evidence of it, um, is just a reminder of, and you've, you've been doing this 17 straight years on the beat of watching a lot of NBA games, um, but just how it, it comes generally, most of the time, the team, a matchup of two teams comes down to just who can execute at the end. It's, it's, it, this is very trite and cliche and whatever, but it's, you, you have world class athletes on both sides. They can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And how many times did we see it during the Tim Duncan, Monte Ginobili, Tony Parker era, where it's like they let the bad teams hang around, hang around, hang around. And then one team is just far too good when it matters. And that's kind of what it's been like on the other side of it with the Spurs all season. There's been a lot of those games where, oh, it just comes down to one quarter. It, it, it typically does. And, uh, uh, we'll, you know, this, it's it's a recurring theme, but we'll see if they can find a way to uh, to get better at that moving forward next season uh, on and on. Uh, but they just – it it always comes down to – Hey, Jeremy Sohan and Devin Vassell and Victor Wembanyama and Trey Jones are are hanging in there pretty pretty well with Jimmy Butler and company for three quarters until the possessions really really matter and then then the experience wins out. So, well, speaking of executing at the end, you want to get us out of here? Yeah, well, I, I was I was leaning that way. Is it? Right. Does, does anybody have anything else they want to they want to mention? Any shout outs? Any shout outs? No, I know I had shout outs. Met uh, met in person last night. Victor is high school principal from from uh, from France. Barbara Martin. She now teaches uh, here in Toronto, and um, 
delightful, delightful lady, very passionate about education. And Victor spent a good good time with her, got her a good seat, uh, spent some time with her after the game. So that was that was nice. It's a nice she a show. podcast listener? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but she may be now. I mean, we're we're growing. We're growing. We know we're on uh, you know, far flung reaches of the globe. Yeah. And, you know, they 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 they've got us all pegged. They've got you, the guy, the gentleman that we spoke to last night, uh, referred to you as the big boss. Yeah, I wanna I wanna clarify that. Nick Talbot's the big boss. I, mean, I may <laughs> well, carry myself well, as the big boss. We know that. We know yes. that. And then yes. you know, but you know, as far as this podcast goes, you were the big boss. I see. Jeff, and, and what, I, and what I do you say about Jeff? The host the, of the most. The, the sarcastic one, I believe. I don't I don't know. The <laughs> yeah. doom and gloom guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, I uh, appreciate you out there listening from not just across highly secure locations across North America, but across the globe. Glad to have you on the ride. We will see you after the All-Star break. Until then, take care of each other and keep it real. <laughs>